Get ready. This is Mark Zuckerberg's villain origin story. And yes, he is a reptilian. We start with this guy. He's out with his girlfriend and two seconds in, you can tell he's a geek and his girlfriend has had it up to here with him. Um, real quick, which real life CEO do you think this is? Of course, it's Mark Zuckerberger. And this was him back in 2003 with his girlfriend. His girlfriend who was about to dump him in three, two, one. Relatable. He was being so condescending, telling her he'd take her into places where she'd meet people she normally would never have the chance to meet. I mean, you're not wrong, Mark, but you don't have to be a butthole about it. He's not taking the breakup well at all. So she tells him he'd probably grow up to be successful, but he should never think the ladies don't love him because he's a nerd, because that'd be wrong. It'd actually be because he's a meanie jerk pants and a robot. Okay, I did the robot part. With a freshly shattered heart, Mark runs back to his dorm, Kirkland House, and starts writing the craziest things about Eric on his live journal blog, including something about her cup size. That was scandalous. Anyway, he's now looking at pictures of people in his dorm when Billy comes in. Billy, by the way, once had a weird idea of putting pictures of people next to that of farm animals and have people vote on who's hotter. Kind of racist. Now Mark decides to borrow from that idea. He doesn't do the farm animal thing, but he compares the looks of Harvard students with each other. He then does some hacking to get the pictures of the students from the individual houses. Easy work for master hacker Mark Zuckerberg. At like 2.08 a.m., this guy, Eduardo, comes in with a key ingredient. This algorithm he's writing on the window. An algorithm that'll help change the internet as we know it. With it, Mark creates Face Mash, a platform on which you can compare and rate the attractiveness of ladies. Who doesn't like a little bit of female objectification? Then slowly, the app begins to spread. The boy Boys are enjoying it, but the ladies hate it. Also, Erica is just finding out that Mark blogged about her, and it leads to her getting bullied. Anyway, Face Smash is now getting crazy traffic, and Eduardo is thinking of shutting it down so they don't get in trouble. Mark is obviously not even letting himself harbor such thoughts. He's too Sigma to back down. And that leads to this man getting a call at 4 in the morning because the school's network is about to crash due to an unusual amount of traffic. Next thing we see, Mark is in front of a disciplinary board, and he makes sure to continue being the a-hole that he is. You have to love a consistent guy. Now to the Winklevoss twins. They're rowing, and later, at breakfast, their partner, Divya is telling them about how Mark crashed the network at 4 a.m. They then also find out that this site had 22,000 page requests, and he did this while he was drunk. They found their guy. We now see Mark in slides in front of the administrative board. I can't lie, that's a baller move right there. This guy was always him. He's being accused of intentionally breaching security, violating copyrights, individual privacy, and university policy. Fast forward a couple decades, and I think we can all agree that nothing has changed. They ask him if he wants to make a statement, and he stands up and says that he had already apologized to anyone who may have been insulted, but as regards to the charges, he believes he deserves some recognition from the board for pointing out some holes in their system. Eventually, they put him on academic probation for six months. The crazy things he wrote in his blog didn't help him at all. Mark becomes a villain in school. I mean, look at what the note they passed to him in class says. He gets that and stands up to leave. The lecturer thinks it's because he's giving up on class, but on his way out, Mark makes sure to remind him that he might be a villain, but he's still a genius, and proceeds to answer the question that had everyone else stopped. In the hallway, he's approached by the Winklevoss twins, who tell him they have an idea they want to talk to him about. So they take a walk and go to meet Divya, who tells him they want him to come on board and work on a dating site named Harvard Connection. Mark says he's in. This is the point where I tell you that this relationship doesn't end well. The twins will end up suing Mark and we're already seeing bits of that deposition playing out at the interims. Same thing with Eduardo, with whom things also ended badly. They asked Mark when he approached Eduardo with the idea for Facebook and he says at a Jewish fraternity party, it was Caribbean night. Eduardo was really into it. Mark, not so much. He literally just came to tell Eduardo that he had come up with something. So they go outside to talk in the freezing cold. He tells Eduardo that the reason Face Mash blew up actually wasn't just because the women were attractive. It was actually because people saw women they knew. People wanted to go on the internet and check out their friends. So why not give them a platform to do that? But not a dating site vibe. More like taking the entire social experience of college and putting it online. Eduardo is freezing, but he manages to tell Mark it sounds great just before he turns into a snowman. Cut back to the deposition. Eduardo continues about how he thought it sounded great because this time, no hacking was involved or even needed. People would provide their own pictures and information willingly. I'm sure that wouldn't go wrong. Also, you can choose to invite or not invite whoever you want. And that's definitely cash money in a world of social structure. Eduardo goes on to say that he wondered why Mark didn't go to meet his programmer roommates, but came to him instead dead. And the reason is because he needed some startup cash, and that's what Eduardo could provide. Mark offered to make him CFO and give him 30%. Eduardo agreed. Anyway, a little fight now breaks out between the boys, which gives Mark the chance to flex his wealth a little on Eduardo. Cut to the deposition with the Winklevoss twins, and Eduardo is called as a witness. He says that Mark told him that he took one look at Harvard Connection and decided it wasn't worth his time. Apparently, while Mark was building Facebook, he was also communicating with the twins, but Eduardo insists that it had nothing to do with the dating site, and one of the twins wasn't having that. But their lawyer steps in and tells Eduardo that Mark was building Facebook, while leading the twins to believe that he was building Harvard Connection. And he goes on to show a series of evidence. Apparently, while they were in business, Mark suddenly started giving excuses upon excuses, which made the guys begin to get suspicious. He was basically busy every day of the week, so it seemed they tried to get through to him by offering Eduardo membership in their exclusive club. This club, by the way, involves an initiation process that might require prospective members to put on their birthday suits in the snow. The lawyer goes on saying that Mark still hadn't completed work on Harvard Connection 39 days after first meeting with his clients. But on the 11th of January, 2004, he registered the domain name, the 
Facebook by Network Solutions. He then asked Eduardo if, to his knowledge, Mark had begun work on Harvard Connections at the time, and Eduardo says no. The lawyer now points out the first time that Mark invented a problem. This was after 32 emails sent and 16 received. Divya now chimes in that Mark had 42 days to study a system and get out ahead. Mark can't take it anymore, so he cuts in and asks a trio if they see any of their code on Facebook. Divya retorts by accusing Mark of stealing their whole idea. Mark just says they actually don't need a forensics team to get down to the bottom of all of this. He simply tells them that if they were the inventors of Facebook, they would have invented Facebook. Pretty cold line. Divya now says he can't wait to stand over Mark's shoulder and watch him write them a check. The lawyer finally gets back control of his deposition and they get back to the issue on ground. At this point, we now cut back to this guy coming to disturb Mark's peace, asking him about Stephanie, a girl in Mark's art history class. He wants to know if Stephanie has a boyfriend and if she'd go out with him. Mark wants to give him one of his signature a-hole responses, but you could see a light bulb flick on his head, and he immediately grabs his bag and runs back to his room, where Eduardo is waiting for him. And that's exactly when Mark added relationship status to Facebook. After that, he was convinced Facebook was ready to go live, so he went ahead with it. Divya finds out about Facebook having gone live on his girlfriend's laptop at a Valentine's thing, and he immediately runs out. Of course, you know where he runs to, to meet the twins. Again, they're rowing, and don't want to be distracted, but Divya just blurts out that Mark stole their website, and it's been live for more than 36 hours. They immediately stop what they're doing. Now they're researching, making calls, and also just marveling at how fast Facebook is growing. One of the twins is being a little lenient, but his brother and Divya are trying to fire him up. These guys really just want to ruin Mark right now, but he keeps insisting that they don't plant stories in the papers about Mark or even sue him. Why? Because they're gentlemen of Harvard, and gentlemen of Harvard don't do that. Oh well. Let's quickly cut back to the deposition where the trio's lawyer asked Mark if he knew that the twins came from wealth. Mark doesn't want to answer at first, but he eventually says he doesn't know whether they came from money or not. The lawyer now provides evidence which shows that Mark actually knew, and then he admits it. The lawyer now goes on to ask Mark why he didn't ask the twins for the money when he needed $1,000 for an internet venture. Mark says he went to Eduardo for the money because he was his best friend and the person he wanted to be partners with. Then the lawyer pokes at him by telling him that his best friend is now suing him for $600 million. We now quickly cut to the deposition which involves Mark and Eduardo. Mark's lawyer asks Eduardo what happened after the initial launch, and he says it exploded, answering the same question in the other deposition. Divya says the same thing. Everyone on the campus was using it, and Mark became the biggest thing on campus. We now go back to the campus days when Eduardo and Mark were still best friends. They both had a seminar together listening to Bill Gates give a talk when this really hot girl asked Eduardo if his friend is Mark Zuckerberg, the creator of Facebook. He says yes, it's both their thing. So she introduces her friend and tells Eduardo to Facebook her, and they can all go for a drink later. Eduardo is so psyched when he's telling Mark about it, both by the fact that a hot girl hit on him, and then because she said, Facebook me. While he's talking, some guys show up and tell Mark he did a really good job with Facebook. One of them implies that he's the next Bill Gates. They get to their dorm and Eduardo says it's time to monetize the site. How? Through advertising. Mark says no. Ironic, right? But Mark makes a good point here. He says at this point, they don't even really know what the product is and what it could be. They just know that it's cool and that's what he never wants to give up. And as he's talking, Eduardo finds a cease and desist letter sent to Mark about 10 days ago when the site had just launched. It's from the trio. They're saying he stole their idea and Eduardo starts hyperventilating. He asks Mark if they indeed stole the idea and Mark assures him that he didn't use any of their code. He says they only came to him with an idea but he had a better one. Eduardo now wants to know why Mark never showed him the letter and Mark says because he didn't think it was a big deal. Eduardo now tells him to always come to him if there's any problem. Then asks Mark what he did about the letter. He said he wrote back. What did he say in the letter? Basically, he raised concerns about the functionality of Harvard Connection and the trio's lawyer is asking why this was the first time he raised those concerns. He had sent 15 emails prior to that one and didn't raise any concerns. He now asks if he was leading his clients on. Mark insists he wasn't. At this point, Aho Mark comes back alive. While the lawyer is talking, he just starts talking about the rain. And when the lawyer asks if he has his full attention or deserves it, Mark says no. Based. He only has the minimum amount of it. He tells him that the rest of his attention is back at the offices of Facebook, where he and his colleagues are doing things that nobody in this room, including, and especially his clients, are intellectually or creatively capable of doing. Mark Zuckerberg kind of goes hard. After that little tirade, they go on a break. They just had to. Back to Harvard. Eduardo and Mark go out to grab drinks with the girls from the seminar, and in no time, they're clapping in the toilet. Wait, what? When they get out of the toilet, Mark spots Eric in the restaurant. He walks up to her and asks to talk to her in private. She's not interested in doing that. Matter of fact, she's not even interested in talking to him. She hasn't forgiven him for all the nasty things he said about her, and she won't move an inch right now. And that right there was Mark's villain origin story. Immediately, he walks back to Eduardo and says they need to expand beyond Harvard, to Yale and Columbia. He has a quick meeting which includes the hot girls from the seminar, Christy and Alice, and they start strategizing. Before the meeting ends, Eduardo adds Stanford to the list of schools they have to expand to. We now cut to the depositions. Mark arrives super early for one of those meetings and is doing some work on his laptop when Marilyn, a member of his legal team, comes in and introduces herself. She's a second year associate. She strikes a conversation with Mark. She says he must really hate the Winklevoss twins, and he says he doesn't hate anybody. He goes on to say that the guys are actually not suing him for intellectual property theft or anything. They're suing him because, for the first time in their lives, things didn't work out how they expected them to. We now cut to when the trio finds out that Mark is expanding. They start scrambling again. Divya wants injunctions, damages, punitive relief, everything. Because every second Facebook is up, Harvard Connections becomes less valuable. They eventually decide that the best line of action is to meet with the president of Harvard, Larry Summers, and tender their case. We now cut to this guy named Sean Parker, founder of Napster. For the Gen Zs, Napster was a platform that basically let folks share music for free. 
great. It was groundbreaking back then. So he had just clapped this girl who goes to school at Stanford. She didn't even know it was Sean Parker she brought home last night. She's literally just finding out now. Anyway, she goes off to take a shower. He has to check his email on her computer. And once he opens it, he sees her Facebook page and asks her what it is. She introduces it to him and his eyes light up. He searches for Mark Zuckerberg and reaches out to him. Back to the twins, they get their meeting with the president. And to cut the long story short, he tells them it's not a university issue and he cannot do anything for them. He tells them to just go and start another project. The boys are nearly running mad, but they can't do anything more, so they leave. Back to the deposition, Eduardo now gets asked about a spring break trip he and Mark took. Eduardo says he had meetings in New York and the trip was paid for with his money that was in the company account. But to make it worse, he says the meeting went horribly because Mark was asleep. No scratch that. He was in a state worse than sleep. Anyway, still in New York, they go on a group date with Christy, who is now dating Eduardo at this point. They're supposed to meet Sean Parker, who comes late for the date. And on top of that, just goes on talking about his Napster story, which makes Eduardo really uncomfortable. He thought Sean was paranoid and delusional. The others had no problem listening, though. He finally gets around to talking about Facebook, asking them what strategies they use and all that. And then he tries to convince Mark to move to California. Eduardo feels like he's being sidelined now, so he cuts in and shares his advertising idea with Sean, thinking Sean would support him. Instead, Sean reiterates Mark's point about Facebook's coolness, being the one thing the company has going for it, and they better see where it's going first. He tells them they're headed for a billion dollar valuation and everyone falls silent. By the way, up until this point, Facebook was called The Facebook. But after that dinner, before Sean leaves, he stops and tells them to drop the the and just call it Facebook. Mark was sold, starstruck, and awestruck. The drive back? Awkward. Back to the deposition, Mark's lawyer now asks Eduardo if he ever did anything that might be considered legitimate grounds for termination. He says no, nothing to embarrass or jeopardize the company. But the lawyer then points out that he was once accused of animal cruelty, and Eduardo is stunned. He explains that it was part of his initiation after he got into the Phoenix. He had to carry a chicken with him at all times and take care of it every day for a week. He insists he didn't torture the chicken, but the article in the paper says otherwise, so he goes on explaining. Basically, he fed chicken to his pet chicken. Making the poor bird a cannibal definitely doesn't look good. He says it was all resolved though, but as he's talking, he appears to reveal that Mark sort of cheated on his final exam. Anyway, Eduardo feels betrayed that Mark told his lawyers about the animal cruelty thing, but the lawyers said they found that information on their own, and that Mark even defended him when they first brought it up. In that same place where Mark first found out about the article on Eduardo's alleged animal cruelty, he tells him he'll be moving to California. Eduardo doesn't really love the idea, and the topic of Sean comes up. Eduardo says he doesn't like Sean because he doesn't have money and doesn't bring anything to the table. Mark argues against that and just tells Eduardo to get on board. Now we see Eduardo enter into this room where a hackathon is going on. He meets Mark there and hands him an envelope. He tells him he just opened a new account and put 18000 in to help him as he moves to Cali in the summer. A winner from the hackathon has emerged, and Mark hires him on the spot. We now get back to the deposition. Eduardo's lawyer asks him the question that has been in my head since I heard $18,000. She asks him why he gave Mark that much money just after expressing his unhappiness with his intention to take the company and move to California. Good question, because, Eddie, I just don't get it. Do you enjoy being hurt? Anyway, Eduardo says he did it because he wanted to be a team player. Man, these rich kids kill me. If you want to be a team player, go buy a basketball or something. Don't hand your partner $18,000. Anyway, while in California, Sean just shows up at Mark's front door one day with this lady named Sharon, who has terrible reflexes. How does someone throw a beer to you twice and you fail to catch it both times? She could catch his pipe, though. Anyway, Sean now walks around the house and he seems impressed, but he seems even more impressed when he finds out that Eduardo didn't come out to Cali. He has that look which says, time to pounce. And he really does pounce. Next, we see Sean and Mark at a nightclub. Of course, we know who took whom there. Okay, but wait. He says Eduardo should not be in New York because this is a once-in-a-generation idea which they should not let slip out of their hands. Now, what side are you on, Sean? Anyway, from this conversation, we find out that Mark and Sean have more in common than we think. Just like Mark, Sean started an abster because of a girl. Now, Mark tells Sean to come and live with him. Big lesson here. Never make long-lasting decisions in the club. I mean, who the hell does that anyway? Well, we have been away from the twins for too long, so let's circle back to them. They're currently representing Harvard in the Henley Royal Regatta, and they lose, but only just. That loss is made worse when they find out later that Facebook has expanded to England. A man comes and tells him that his daughter who schools in Cambridge was talking about the race with her friends on Facebook. They're about to lose their minds. Remember, one of the twins was insisting that they don't sue Mark? That whole gentleman of Harvard BS? Well, he has changed his mind now. He says they sue Mark in federal court. Finally. Now cut to Sean. He's enjoying life living with Mark and that's interrupted by Eduardo, who has just arrived from New York. Eduardo, who just arrived in the rain, is frustrated already because Mark didn't come and get him from the airport an hour ago, as was initially agreed upon. And I'm sure seeing Sean in the house he's paying for hasn't helped his mood at all. When Mark shows up, he asks him what Sean is doing here and why he's setting up meetings. And he doesn't just ask, he yells. But he then asks to talk to Mark privately. Mark first asks him how his internship is going and how Christy is. But the thing here is that Eduardo quit his internship on the first day and he told Mark. Also, Christy, according to Eduardo, has gone crazy. She's jealous, irrational, and he's frightened of her. Relatable. But down to the reason he called him out, Eduardo tells him he doesn't want Sean to be a part of all this. Mark basically tells him it's too late and if he doesn't get on board, he'd be left behind. He tells Eduardo that the whole thing is moving faster than any of them imagined. The argument heats up and obviously, they find no middle ground because the following day, Eduardo goes to freeze the company account while Mark and Sean go to secure a $500,000 investment from Peter Thiel. But before that meeting is over, they ask Mark who Eduardo is. Take note of this. We now cut to Eduardo in his room lying on his bed when Christy comes in and begins to ask him all sorts of questions. In her line of questioning, she reveals that she sent 47 unanswered texts. 47. Even for a simp, that's too much. 
And then we get the first ever fight caused by the relationship status on Facebook. She asks Eduardo why he's single on Facebook. He says he was single when he set up the page, and he doesn't know how to change it back. But she doesn't believe that. She jumps into the conclusion that he's cheating. Woman moment. He's saved by his ringtone. He gets a call from Mark, so he hands Chrissy the present he got her, and he goes to the bathroom to take the call. Mark wants to know why Eduardo froze the account, and he says he did it to get his attention. Mark just goes on a tirade about how Eduardo put the entire company at risk, because without money, the company cannot function. He says if Facebook servers are down for even a day, the reputation is irreversibly destroyed. I'm from the future and I can tell you that's not true. Facebook's reputation was irreversibly destroyed for other reasons. And while Mark is setting Eduardo's butt on fire over the phone, Christy is setting his house on fire, but he manages to quell both fires. Mark now gives him the good news about Peter Thiel's half a million dollar investment and tells him to get to San Francisco ASAP because his signature is needed on some documents. Finally, a smile on Eduardo's face, but before he even moves an inch, he makes sure to dump Christy. Based. The following day, Eduardo's at the office in San Francisco and the news quickly goes from good to better. His share has just gone up from 30 to 34%, even though Mark Marx has gone down from 60 to 51% to make space for Sean, Peter, and Dustin Malkovitz. Now the deposition, Eduardo is blaming himself for signing that document that day without first getting his lawyers to look it over. His lawyer called it his own death certificate. He goes on to say that after he signed the documents, Mark told him he won't be coming back to school for some time. So the goodbyes that were saying now held some weight, but Mark told him he had to come back for an amazing party Peter is planning to throw. Eduardo says he'll be there. The following day, Sean drives Mark to a building for meeting in his pajamas and gives him some directives. Anyway, fast forward to the party. Before he flew down, Eduardo got an email from Mark telling him there was also going to be a business meeting, only for Eduardo to arrive and find out that it was an ambush. He walks into the office and he's told that his shares have been diluted from 34% to 0.03%. Enraged, he immediately walks out and smashes Mark's laptop. And you know what makes everything even worse? Mark, Dustin, Peter, and Sean all had their shares untouched. No dilution. Nothing. Nah, this was so cold. Heartless, man. And Mark doesn't even show remorse. He blames Eduardo for not being smart enough. And to rub further salt into the wound, Sean reveals that his name has been taken off the masthead as CFO and co-founder. And then he offers to give him back all the money he invested. Eduardo nearly punches him. Before Eduardo leaves, he promises to sue Mark. We now see Facebook surpass 1 million users, but Mark doesn't seem very happy. Later, at the celebration party, the cops burst in and take Sean in for salt possession. I believe he eats it with his nose. He calls Mark from the station. You can tell that Mark is so disappointed, especially because he was doing it with the interns. Sean now tries to blame Eduardo for everything, and Mark just tells him to go home. Back to the deposition, Marilyn comes to tell Mark that they're done for the day. He tries to ask her out, but she turns him down. He tells her he's not a bad guy, and she says she knows. He then asks her what happens now, and she says they'll have to settle, and he'll even have to pay a little extra so they sign an NDA. He asks why he'll have to do that when he invented Facebook, and she basically tells him he won't survive in front of a jury simply because he's not likable. Very true. Her last words to him before she leaves are, you're not an asshole, Mark. You're just trying so hard to be. Fire line. And what does he do after hearing that? He goes to search Eric on Facebook, sends her a friend request, and just keeps refreshing the page. We've all been there. While he's refreshing, we see that the twins got a $65 million settlement and signed an NDA. Eduardo received an unknown settlement and had his name restored to the Facebook co-founder. Moral of the story? Mark Zuckerberg.